Guys, today, if we title this message, it would be called The Benefits, the Blessings, and the Breakthroughs of Fasting. Amen. And, and today, what we want to do quickly, we want to share with you uh, some key verses dealing with the importance of fasting. Do you realize back in the Old Testament in, in Exodus chapter 34 and verse 28, the Bible says that Moses, the man of God, was called by the Lord to go up to the top of the mountain, and there God spoke to him. And he began to write the Ten Commandments as he fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible also tells us the Israelites prayed for a miraculous victory. The Bible says that some men came to King Jehoshaphat and told him that there was an enemy army approaching from Edom trying to take them out. But Jehoshaphat uh, began to call a solemn fast. And the Bible says that they were divinely delivered by the hand of of the Lord. Can you see? Amen. We also find out in Daniel chapter 9, uh, verses 3, and also chapter or verses 21 and 22, that Daniel began to pray and begin to fast. The Bible says it was for three weeks or 21 days. Therefore, the fast that we're doing uh, starting this afternoon is named after him. Amen. And when he began to fast and pray, all of a sudden he received guidance that only God can give. Guys, can I tell you today, when you don't know where to turn, fasting is a good way to get direction from the Lord. Can you see? Amen. Now, switching to the New Testament, we find out that even Jesus fasted and he prayed. Can I remind you that after uh, his baptism, when God opened up the heavens and spoke and said, this is my beloved son, that the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness where he was tempted by the enemy. But notice the Bible says for 40 days Jesus fasted and he prayed and defeated the devil and all the power of darkness. And after the fast, watch this, after the fast is when God led him into his three-and-a-half-year ministry campaign. After the fast, amen. We also find out that the early Christians fasted and prayed and, and, and begin, God began to explode them with supernatural growth. The Apostle Paul prayed and began to fast, and the Bible says in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty seven 27, he fasted often. Now, guys, that's good and fine when it talks about the times in the Bible, but let me ask you a question. Is fasting for then or is it for now as well? It's for all times. Can you say amen? As a matter of fact, guys, can I remind you that uh, there are some awesome stories that took place in secular history about people that were fasting. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that, man, I, I love history. And, and let me give you a little bit of a, a, a history lesson today. For many of you, you know that there was a war that divided the nation called the what? Civil War. It took place from 1861 to 1865 when Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States. But can I tell you, as the war began to tear the nation apart, after the war was over, President Lincoln actually called four separate fasts for this nation to follow. As a matter of fact, he led the nation, the entire nation, in four separate fasts. And in March 30th, 1863, President Lincoln declared a national fast day. Think about that. After the war was over, they began to fast and pray that God would begin to put the nation back together. And can I tell you that after the fourth fast was over in 1867, after this young nation was depleted from its resources because the war had ravaged the land, we find out that because money was tight because of the cost of war, that all of a sudden, watch this, after the fourth fast, this is amazing, that out of the blue, Russia decided to sell Alaska for $7.2 million, broken down to two cent per acre. That doesn't just happen. That is the favor of God on a young nation that was fasting and wanting to put God first in their lives. Can you see? Amen. As a matter of fact, because of these four fasts and people begin to call back on the name of the Lord, history says that this young nation lived in a surplus for the next 28 years. But here's the awesome part. Because they fasted and they prayed and they believed God, all of a sudden the blessings of God begin to rain down on this young nation. 
because of their because of their fasting, all of a sudden new inventions begin to pour out of the United States of America, causing the United States to be a leader in the young world. What were the inventions? To name a few, they were the phonograph, the light bulb. Can you thank God for Thomas Edison? Amen. Uh, numerous factories begin to pop up and appear all over the United States, not to mention airplanes, telephones, and even the automobile all begin to come out of the United States after they fasted and prayed and believed God. Guys, can I tell you today that favor came because they fasted and they put God first in their lives. Can I remind you in Matthew 6, the Bible says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Mm, amen. Um, you know, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, well, <laughs> are you able to do that? I mean, are you allowed to, like, declare a fast upon the whole church? Well, um, since President Lincoln decided to declare a fast upon the entire nation, I'm going to say yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say yes. And it's happening all over, all over the world um, today yeah. because at the first of every year, there are, it's a corporate fast yeah. in the body of Christ. So if you were to Google fasting 2019, you're going to find so many churches starting that today. are starting today yeah. and jumping on board. But here, um, just real quickly, I want to read to you the proclamation appointing a national fast day. This is the words um, penned by um, President Lincoln at the time. We have been recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. Wow. But we have forgotten God. Come on. Wow. Wow. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. We have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Wow. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, wow. too proud to pray to the God that made us. Wow. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power, to confess our national sins, and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Preach Abraham. That's pretty on, guys, right? amazing. That's actually found at abrahamlincolnonline.org if you want to read the entire thing from start to finish. And that was the declaration of the first national fast, which was in 1863, and there were four of them. Yeah. And then the blessings began to flow in this na nation after, after 67, wow. so, which, is, which is after the fourth fast, which is pretty absolutely powerful. Amen. So, so we're doing a church-wide fast. We're calling a church-wide fast. We're asking you to participate. It does not mean duck out of church for the next three weeks because you feel convicted and you don't want to participate. Right. Don't get some like three-week flu. Okay. We know where to find you. All right. So here's the thing. Um, that is, this is what's going on. And, and how does it apply to us? Like Moses, he was in need to hear from God. He was hungry for a greater purpose. He was needing to hear from God. And for some of us today, in 2019, we flipped over that calendar and we said, I need to hear from God about something. Yeah. Yeah. There's something I need to hear about God. There's something that I've been carrying with me that I need to set aside. There is something, and I need to hear from God. My life is too cluttered. My ears are too full with all the other junk in my life, and I need to make room for God, and I need to hear from God. Like Moses, maybe you are starting off the year saying, I need a purpose. I need to hear from God. I need answers. Yeah. Maybe like the Israelites, you need a victory in some area of your life. And, the, and I'm saying these things because I want you to figure out the why behind your what. Come Don't on. just do the what. Figure out why you're fasting. Yeah. Why is it that you're needing to fast? Why, what is it that you're going to get on your face for for the next 21 days and call upon the name of the Lord and sit he down here and say, God, do you see me? Because I, 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 this is what I need, and I'm calling upon you, and I'm asking you. Uh, maybe like uh, Daniel, you're in need of guidance from God over a situation in your life. 
Maybe like Nehemiah, you need God to majorly rebuild your life. Maybe he needs to rebuild your attitude, your confidence. Maybe you lost your confidence last year. Maybe you lost your joy last year. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you left it somewhere and you don't know where in the world you, you left it, yeah. but you got to find it. Come on. Yeah. This fast will help you find it. That's right. Amen. Um, perhaps God just needs to remake you. Yeah. That's me. That's mine. It's less of me and more of you. Come on. I'm crucifying flesh for 21 days. I'm getting all the drama, all the garbage, all the, pardon me, all the crap out of my life. I just am. I'm sick of the things that bog us down. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Those things that are so, that don't go away, yeah. those things that the enemy uses to pop up every day, the minute that you get some joy, he pops them back up again. Am I talking to anybody Come today? On. Come on. Yeah. So that's what my fast is about, like you need to know it, but I'm just sharing with you, that's mine. Because I know where I need to be and where I'm not, and I know how to get there. Yeah. And it's through a fast. Come on. And through the next 21 days, it's God, less of me and more of you, less right, of my right, flesh right. and more of your spirit. Come I on. need to be remade. Yeah. I need to find my joy again. I need to find my confidence again. I know who you've made me to be. And somewhere along the way, I lost it. Come on. Come on. And I will find it. Yeah. I will find it in these 21 days. And you've got to know going into it that this is what I'm going after. Come on. This is what I'm going after. If you're, if you're looking to get to New York City, you better have a map and you better figure out where you're going. You don't just get in a car and just start driving all around the, all around the country. You know where you're going. Yeah. Figure out where you're going. Maybe like Jesus, you're in need of victory over a temptation. There's a temptation that assails you every time, on, every year. You've been dealing with the same temptation. It's still there. You crucify it for a little bit and there it pops up again. Maybe through this fast, you are going to crucify it once and for all and you're just going to call it dead. Come on, come in on. Jesus name maybe this is your time before you launch out into ministry like it was for Jesus because you don't go to a new level and deal with new devils without a new anointing on, amen right. without leaving the junk behind yeah, without yeah. shedding the flesh that cannot stay this is what fasts are for. Um, maybe you're desperate. You're in a time in your life where you're absolutely desperate for something. You're desperate for uh, for decision making. Maybe you're maybe you need an answer on something. Maybe you have a need in your family. Maybe you have a need in your finances. Maybe you've got some decisions coming up. If you need answers, don't go to your neighbor and don't go to your unsaved someone. You don't need wisdom from sources. You Come need on. wisdom from the source. Yeah, you need to yeah. tap into the power, the only power, on. the only one that knows your tomorrow, yeah. that puts your life together, and that knows what's best for you. So here's the thing. So some of us might be saying, okay, so I got it. I got it. I need to fast. You convinced me. I need to fast. If you're telling me it'll bring clarity to my life, um, then, then maybe you'd go, okay, so I get it. I need to, but I still have some questions. We might be asking, what is fasting, and why would one choose to fast? Why? You enjoying this so far? Come on, I'm about to shout, man. Come on, guys. All right, here's, here's the question. What is fasting, and why would we choose to fast? You ready? Here's, here it is. Fasting is a physical discipline of going without food for a spiritual reason. Let me go on. Yeah. The word fast literally means to cover your mouth and refuse to eat. That's what fasting means. Okay, so you might be going, okay, so who would do that? First of all, not this man. He eats seven times a day, okay? So if you are here today, go, you know, it's funny because through fast, he often reminds me when I'm sitting there going, man, he goes, hey, I don't want to hear it. You've missed two meals today. I've missed seven all right? So the thing is, is that why would anyone cover our mouths and refuse to eat? Why would anybody want to do that? Voluntarily refuse to eat. Sometimes the word itself sends a lump into our throat and, and makes us literally, like I said in the beginning, makes us want to run really fast away from this subject. But here's what we're going to do. Let's start with this. The is and the is not so fasting. Let's just go through this so we can kind of clear out the clutter and we can understand what we're doing and what God's calling us to do. The is and the is not of fasting. Let's go for the first right, one. I guess you ready? Let's do this. Fasting is, watch this, is biblical and it is commanded by God. Mm. The reason we fast is because it's biblical and beneficial for believers. Can I get a witness yeah. if you believe that? Watch this. Fasting has major benefits for our physical bodies. In other words, the outward man. 
But more importantly, fasting has major benefits and blessings for our inward man. In other words, for our spirit. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that King Solomon, you've heard me say it before, the wisest and the wealthiest man that ever walked the earth. He said in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 12, watch this, three or even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And guys, let me share with you. In, you flip over to Matthew 6 in the New Testament. Jesus was preaching on the mountain. The, the topic in the Bible is called the Sermon on the Mount. And here was Jesus preaching to this multitude of people. And do you realize in Matthew 6, we find a triple braided cord that he was preaching about. Watch this. Matthew 6, we see that Jesus said three words or three times, when you pray, when you give and when you fast. Did you catch that? Mm. I love the fact that Jesus didn't say, if you pray, if you give, and if you fast. But see, there was expectation here. Jesus knew that we needed to do this. So therefore, he said, when, not if, come on, guys, when you pray, when you give, and when you fast. Yeah. Let's look at what the Bible says in Matthew 6. And verse 2, Jesus said, when you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do. Mm -hmm. He went on to say, when you pray, in Matthew 6, 5, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners in the synagogues where everyone can see them. Well, let me add, or when everyone can hear them. Mm. Then finally, he said, Matthew 6, 16, watch this, when you fast. So, to answer your question that some of you are thinking, man, should I fast? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you should. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is backing, us, backing this up today. When you fast, here's what he said, don't make yourselves look sad like the hypocrites. <laughs> <laughs> they, put on, or they put a look of suffering on their faces so that people will see that they are fasting. The truth is, that's all the reward they get. Guys, can I tell you today uh, that we're supposed to fast in secret, not for show? Amen. Yeah. Come on, that was a weak amen. i got to get a better amen. one than that. Amen. We are supposed to fast in secret, not for show. Can I remind you, Matthew 6, 18, God said, or Jesus said, your father who sees in secret will reward you. Yeah. Think about that. So here's the key. Praying, giving, and fasting weren't optional. They were not suggestions for believers back then. They were commanded just as they are today. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Number two, fasting is a discipline. It's a spiritual discipline. It's not a diet. It's not a diet. Come on, let's get right? Um, let's take a look at this picture real quickly. Um, a diet changes the way you look, but a fast changes the way you see. Oh, come on. That's good. Amen. We're looking to see differently. Yeah. We're looking to see God differently. We're looking to see our lives differently. We're looking to clear out the, that, that fog, that haze, that thing that we've collected over time. A diet changes the way you look, but a fast changes the way you see. Yeah. This is not about losing weight, though you probably will. Yeah. In the first day, probably five pounds for people that eat seven times a day. <laughs> it's not way. fair. <laughs> this is not about losing weight, but you probably will. Some of you just went, I'm on then, I'm on. No, it's not supposed to be about that. It's not about detoxing, but you will for sure. Yeah. You will. Don't go far. Just Guys, kidding. fasting is not about getting healthy. Watch this. Though you will be healthier after the fast, yep. more than you can imagine. As a matter of fact, I'm reminded that Jamie Peacock uh, is going to be here the next service. If you look at him, Jamie lost a considerable amount of weight because after the fast, he continued to stay disciplined last year. All the way up until this certain time today. I, I would love to tell you that happened to me, but instead of uh, continuing on the fast, I continued to feast. Come on, guys. I <laughs> fell off the wagon. Come on, don't act all holy on me. Some of you did the same thing. Man, I had declared and decreed, man, I'm going to eat good. And guess what happened? I ate good, but the wrong way. And I fell off the wagon in a hurry. Amen. By the way, I want to mention to you, if you're on medications, if you have health-related issues, please, please, please be sure to consult your doctor. Okay, or choose a fast that will, and or um, re, uh, choose a fast that will enable you to stay on the regimen that your doctor already has yeah. you on. 
okay? So this is not something that is supposed to change anything. Make sure that you are being smart about that. Um, also, this is not about finding new foods that you like. <laughs> new creative ways. It's, it's, not supposed to, it's not supposed to shift your focus into a new type of diet because it's not supposed to be about the food. It's about getting hungry for God, yeah. right? Um, so it's not about discovering new foods that we're allowed to eat, um, although we'll probably be talking about them, and you're going to say, well, we're not supposed to be talking about it. This is a public fast that we're doing. There's a private fast and a public fast. So don't feel convicted if you do talk to your neighbor about your fast because we're all in this together, and sometimes we're going to need that encouragement. We're going to need to talk about that, but it's really not supposed to be about the food that we are or are not eating. Right. It's supposed to be about getting hungry for God. Um, it is not supposed to be as, about, as much about what to eat, what don't to eat, uh, what don't eat, it's supposed to be about Jesus. So do me a favor. Um, don't get so intensely preoccupied with what you will be eating and not eating, what you'll give up. The point is to fill up on Jesus, okay? Um, I have this little thing up here. Be careful not to allow food to be your focus. It should be about the discipline of putting him first and intentionally getting hungry for God. Don't get caught up in, am I allowed to have pepper or not? <laughs> Don't get caught up in the little minutia of this thing because it's not, don't be legal. It's not about that as much as it's about where is my focus. If, if some of us went to Jesus as much as we went to a plate, we would be saints. If some of us reached for Jesus as much as we reached for our cell phone, we could walk through a wall. So it's really, or walk on water. So it's really, it's really about the discipline during this time of not just pulling things out, but what we put in. Right. Okay? Right. And what we're putting in is Jesus. What we're putting in is prayer. What we're putting in is time with God, intentionally getting hungry for God. Guys, let me share with you quickly some different types of fasts that are actually found in the Word. Number one, we have a full fast. Therefore, it is no food. This is what Jesus did. This is what Moses did. They, they had no food. They did drink water today. People might drink some type of broth along with that water or some type of juices are allowed as well. The second fast is the Daniel fast. Let me um, stop you real quickly because you said about broth and, and juices. Believe it or not, um, uh, probably all your Chick-fil-A's in the United States right now, if you happen to go through a, a thing, if you go through a, um, and you are forced to eat out, if you go to a Chick-fil-A and you tell them that you're fasting, they normally, during this 21 days, they have broth to sell you, believe it or not. Chick-fil-A's on board. Yeah. Praise Jesus for Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So, so where do you find broth, believe it or not? Even some of the participating um, um, places that know what we're doing and that are on board with it as well. Right. Thank God for Chick-fil-A. I've always said it comes from a magic shoot from heaven. Come on, guys, right? <laughs> it's because they also sell to Dr. Pepper, but Amen. go ahead. The second type of fast, and we're going to not even talk about that right now. The second type of fast <laughs> called the Daniel fast that, that we're uh, encouraging everybody to do as a church body it means no meat, no sweets, no bread yeah. for 21 days starting this afternoon. Amen. The third thing is a three-day fast. This can be a full fast or a Daniel fast. By the way, all found in the Word. Number four, a partial fast where you might fast from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. or from Sun up to sundown, then eating later at night. Or the fifth thing we added, not in the word, but you can also apply this, is called a soul fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But think about this. Soul fast means you're abstaining from things such as social media, shopping. <laughs> I'm just waiting to resonate, right? Uh, TV or anything else that God might be directing you to give up. Those of you who are laughing... Either you know somebody or it's all over you, amen? It's something that's supposed to be sacrificial. And the hmm in the front um, was because actually if I could tell this, um, and she's giving me the nod, um, Samantha, as you know, is she's our resident shopper here at Restore Church. And, um, and she not only shops very well, but she, um, she loves it. And, um, and she would say it's an addiction. Um, so for her to give that up, for some of you, you're like, 
I'll give that up. That's totally easy for me. No, no, that's not the point. It shouldn't be easy for you. Um, but for her last year, that was an absolute sacrifice. That was something that she thought about more oftentimes than not. So if she went to the Word as much as she went to grabbing a credit card and walking out the door, that's where her sacrifice was. And I'll add this. Um, when I met Anthony, I was a vegetarian. <laughs> that worked out well. Um, but we I, changed that in a hurry. Yeah. Come on, guys. But my point is, is that um, I also had a, a massive eating disorder that God delivered me from. And so uh, year, years ago, many, many, many years ago. And so when he delivered me from that, to me, most times, eating is a chore. I have to remind myself to eat or I have to, I like eating. Don't get me wrong. Don't be like, oh, I wish. No, I enjoy eating and there's certain things I will eat a lot of. But I'm saying that it's more of a chore to, fi to figure out what to eat. This man enjoys eating. Me, it's kind of a, choi a chore of let's figure out what I have to eat. So for me, fasting meat is not a big deal because I don't like meat to begin with. Does that make sense? So in my fast, in my Daniel fast, it's really more about, um, about altering it to what is a sacrifice for you. So I want you to pray on that. What is a sacrifice for one may not be for another. Yeah. So when you're praying about God, what is it that would crucify my flesh right. so that I can put my mind upon you and let you know that I'm committed to focusing on you and going all in, that is the, that is the thing that you're supposed to be asking. Again, food's not supposed to be our focus. Um, it's supposed to be the daily discipline of intentionally getting closer to Jesus and making him our focus and our priority. And, of course, not just pulling things out, but putting things in like that devotional and going to the word of God to feed ourselves. Guys, number three, watch this. Fasting is not a hunger strike. Yeah. To manipulate God, right? It is an opportunity, though, to get God's attention. How? With our obedience and our commitment to him. Let me share something with you. A hunger strike and fast are completely different. Why? Yeah. Because a hunger strike tries to get God to submit to our demands. Mm. But fasting, on the other hand, submits to God's commands. Did you catch that? When we fast, we submit to God's commands. But when we have a hunger strike, we want God to submit to our demands. Mm -hmm. A hunger strike says, my will. Not yours. But fasting says, your will, not mine. Guys, can I tell you today that when you and I fast, watch this, we voluntarily submit ourselves to God. How? By asking him to prepare us to hear and to trust his will and his chosen outcome. Not attempting, by the way, to guilt God or force him to do what we want him to do. Fasting is submitting and saying, God, I want what you want, not what I want. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you'll remember in the word of God, David went before the Lord uh, to pray for his child that was about to die. He went to the Lord and he prayed. And in his word, or in the word, it says that David said, perhaps God will. Perhaps God will. Maybe God will. Maybe God will hear. Maybe God will answer. Maybe God will allow my son to live. So he was fasting during that time, but he went into it with an attitude of, I'm asking, what you want. but I'm submitted to your outcome. I'm submitted, and, and during this, I'm, I'm needing you to prepare me for whatever your answer is. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible says that his son did die. Why would I bring that up? Because there's going to be things that you're going to take before the Lord during this fast, mm -hmm. and you're going to have a decided outcome in mind, and it's not going to work out that way. And you and I have no right to say, God, I did my part, and you didn't do yours. This is not, we don't go into it trying to manipulate God Come for on. our will, but rather to be prepared to receive his will yeah. and his yeah. outcome. And here's the great part. For David, when it was over, when he found that his son was not alive, then the Bible says that he got up, he washed his face, he anointed his head, he got dressed, and he went and ate. Right. Why? 
because he asked, God decided, and he got up and he went on, and he allowed God to take care of the outcome mm -hmm. and then to heal his heart so he can move forward. That's right. Does that that's make awesome. sense? Yeah, awesome. So we have to remember that it's okay to ask anything through this fast boldly. Right. Ask. Right. Ask. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask, but know that we have to be willing to trust God and his will and his outcome. Right. Whatever that is. Right. And fasting helps us to do exactly that. Let's move on quickly. Fasting is an invitation by God to come after him. It is not a requirement to earn his love. Come on. Let's just get one thing clear. Ready? We receive God's love and his blessings and his favor by grace. Mm -hmm. By grace, yeah. we don't earn it. Yeah. We don't earn it. We don't earn it by a fast. Jesus Christ paid the price for us with his blood sacrifice. It is by his grace that we receive absolutely anything from God, and there's nothing that we can do to make him love us any more or any less. Come on. This is not about brownie points. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is not about, uh, this is not about um, making God love us more or making up for something we messed up last week. Okay, this is about voluntarily choosing to give up something perfectly good. There's nothing wrong with the things we're giving up, yeah. but it's for something even better, for more of God. It's an invitation by God to get closer to him, to come after him with all of our hearts, to humble ourselves before God, to worship him, to push away the plate with sacrifice and increase our time with him and to focus on him during that time. Right. Okay? I guess number five, watch this. Fasting is not easy. Uh -huh. It's not fun. You, you're Come allowed on. to say amen to that. <laughs> but fasting is powerful for our faith. If you believe that, say amen. Come on, amen. I need a louder amen. amen. Watch this, guys. It's about increasing your faith and drawing closer to God. It's about you decreasing and him increasing. Watch this. Amen. We don't only give up food for a period of time. We fill up on Jesus during that time. Did you catch that? I read this yesterday. I want to share it with you. Fasting is a temporary physical demonstration that we believe what the Bible says. Matthew 4, 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone. Come on, guys. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Fasting brings a hunger for God. Would you agree with that? Yeah. The Bible says in Psalms 42, 1 through 2, uh, this is David, King David, by the way, running for his life. He was basically exiled from the kingdom, longing to be back in the temple where he could worship God in spirit and in truth. He was longing for that connection that he had with God in the synagogue. And yeah. here's what David wrote as his enemies were pursuing him. He said, as the deer pants for the water, so I long for you guys, can I yeah. can I share something with you? Anybody ever been deer hunting? What happens is when uh, when a deer is trying to get somebody, uh, a, a man or animal off its scent, it goes to the water because it runs and runs and runs, and it has to get a drink to refresh itself. And also, it will go through the stream to try to help uh, make its scent not as strong, so those pursuing it will not find it. David was running for his life. Mm -hmm. And he compared himself to a deer that's being chased by a bunch of wild animals. And David said, as a deer pants for the water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst yeah. for God. The living God, David said, where can I find him to come and stand before him? Guys, see, here's what happens. When you fast, once again, it empties you of yourself as you long to be filled with with God and God alone. Mm -hmm. You become hungry and thirsty for his power and for his presence. Mm -hmm. Guys, it's not easy. It's not fun. As a matter of fact, let, let's share a couple of things that you might experience. You might feel lightheaded. Mm -hmm. Come on. You might not have any energy whatsoever. You're gonna when you're depleted, yep. when you're, depleted uh, you're gonna have no energy. You might be foggy. Grumpy, irritable, irritated, come on, I'm preaching to somebody, hungry or even hangry, which is angry and hungry, right? You might be hangry. So, uh, some of you get that way even when you're not fasting. That's right. You might get a headache. When you just miss a meal. You might all. get a headache and your breath might kill the person beside you. 
You're going to detox and you're going to feel like you are being cleaned completely out. But. Those first, and, it, and, and it's those first three days. So just kind of prepare for that. Those first three days ain't going to be fun. Right. Right. It's just not going to be fun. Absolutely. Give yourself some grace. It's not going to be fun. But, but I will say this, and if you've experienced this, I want you to say amen when we say these things to encourage yourself and to encourage the person next to you. But here's what you'll also get to experience. After those three days, after somewhere around there, when your body is getting detoxed, you will become more clear than you've been in a very long time. Amen? You will find how alive the word becomes when you read it. Amen. It'll begin jumping off the page to you. You'll begin hearing God in a new way. You'll start to recognize how clean you feel because we've, first of all, we've pushed away all the clutter. And when you're fasting... You are hyper aware of negative and wrong junk that's in your life. Right, right. And therefore, you'll push that away, or you should. Yeah, yeah. You'll feel that conviction to do so, if nothing else. And therefore, you'll feel more clean because you've entered into a voluntarily, voluntary time of spirit-led self-examination. Mm -hmm. And God will begin doing a deeper work in you. Yeah, that gives a deeper work in you. You will have an increased dependency on God and therefore a sense of closeness to him like you've never had before. Guys, I hope that you're getting hungry to fast mm. because I believe that only God can give you the breakthrough that you yep. need by sacrificing and pushing away the plate and say, God, more than anything else, I want you. Yeah. I desire to have a closer walk with you. And here's what happens. Your ears begin to hear the voice of God. In a heightened spiritual sense, you have an awareness and understanding of God and for his love for you. You'll have a deeper sense of purpose. Yeah. You'll begin to see answers. Yeah. Miracles will take place. Yep. Is that biblical? You better believe it. It's in the word. Breakthroughs like you've never seen before. Breakthroughs that you've been praying about and seeking God over will come your way. When you fast and when you pray. We start it during the fast and God has promised to complete what, he's, what we started during that fast. That's right. During that fast. Finally, fasting is not for the strong and the already ultra spiritual. That's right. Thank God. Please do not go, oh, this, this isn't for me. I, I'm, I'm new to the faith. All the better. Absolutely. All the better. Get in. I, I, well, I, I've really never done it before, and, and I feel really weak. I'm really not that strong spiritually. That's why. That's why. This is not for the already ultra-spiritual. It is for every one of us. In fact, fasting is for the weak yeah. because it's about crucifying the flesh. Come on. It, it's the flesh that makes us weak, and that's what we're crucifying. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, we've gotten to the point. I know that I have. Some of us are excited about this fast. I see some of you posting that you're ready for it. And it's not just because you ate everything in sight for the last three weeks during the holiday. For some of us, that's what it is. But for others of us, you're just done with self. You're just sick of you, right? You want more of God and you want less of you. In fact, it is for the weak. It is for the common. It is for the ordinary, everyday people, which is us. Yeah that recognize that we need God and that we need more of God in our lives. And it is for those of us who recognize that we need a spiritual detox, that we have literally collected too much garbage in our spirits Come on. over time Come on. and that we need to clear away the clutter in our hearts, in our minds, and we need, again, to make room for God. And we need to put him first. Matthew 6, Pastor already shared it. We seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seeking after him is what we're doing. Yeah. And then all the things that we have need of will be added unto us. We're seeking God first. That's really what it's about. Guys, that is the is and the is not to fasting. Again, we're not manipulating God. We are literally worshiping God, honoring God. And like Abe Lincoln said, we are remembering that we are not so self-sufficient that we don't need him. We are recognizing how desperately we do need him and how cluttered we've become yeah. 
and we are making room for him intentionally because that doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. The Word of God tells us in James, I believe it's James 4, 7, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. Draw closer to God and he'll draw closer to you. That's what we're doing. Draw closer to God and he'll draw closer to us. He's waiting on us. It doesn't just happen. Let's do this. Amen. Yes, we can have the musicians come up here. Today you've heard a message of instruction, what fasting can do. Fasting is crucifying the flesh and making a choice to walk in the spirit. And, and I'll be the first to testify today, there's a lot of junk I need cleaned out in my life. Yeah. Stuff yeah. that's weighed me down. And you know the awesome thing about fasting? Yeah, you, you're going to lose some weight physically. But more importantly, you're going to lose some weight spiritually. You know, the Bible says, lay aside every weight that so easily besets you. There's a lot of weight that we need to lay down today. A lot of weight that we need to shake off. And, and I believe with everything within me that the only way we can do that is by starting our year off right. By saying, God, I want you. I don't want me because I mess things up. Come on, am I just preaching to myself today? When I'm in charge, I mess things up. It can't be me. It's got to be him. So today, let me challenge you. Let's go old school for just a second. Let's draw a line in the sand. And say, God, it's got to be you. I tried things my way and I continue to mess them up. See, here's the key. Enough is enough. We've got to put him first. Remember, if we put him first, the Bible says everything else will fall into place. But here's the problem. We take God out of the equation, and guess what we have? A problem. But remember this. He's still the answer to all of your problems. Put him first. Start 2019 off on the right foot. Crucify the flesh. Come on, man. I'm believing God for great things, mighty miracles, and, and, and incredible breakthroughs. And the only way that can happen is by us pushing away the plate fasting and praying say God like never before I need you as a sinner and the controller remember the word Lord means controller I need you as the Lord of my life I love what Pastor Jennifer said a minute ago and guys you know me I like to eat man the seven meals that I eat daily 99.9% .9 of the time, they are all involving some type of meat. Daniel fasting is very, very difficult for me. But I realized at the end of the 21 days, you know what, man, I feel better. All the sugar is out of my system. My skin looks better. I feel better. My joints don't hurt. Man, there's some major benefits to fasting, guys. You're detoxing yourself of all the junk. And spiritually, you're detoxing yourself from all the junk. Major physical and spiritual benefits. Today is a new day. Come on, guys. A new day, new you. Amen? New year, new you. Let me challenge you today. The burdens were never meant to be carried by you. The burdens were meant to be carried by the Lord. So today, as we go into an altar call, if there's burdens that are weighing you down, you're tired of carrying, lay them at the altar. And here's the key. Lay them there and leave them there. Don't pick them up and take them home and continue to carry them. Lay them down and leave them there. You'll feel lighter because you're never meant to carry the load. Guys, it's going to be a good year. But we need to start off by sacrificing 
and putting God first. And I believe that will set the tone, watch me, that will set the tone for the remainder of the year. Remember, when we put him first, everything else falls into place. Amen? Guys, let me say this. If there's anything that you need prayer over, you need to lay anything down, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. As the band begins to play, if they want to sing, that's fine. And then we're going to pray and dismiss. We're just going to keep it real simple right now. If you need prayer, there's a place at this altar for you. We'd love the opportunity to pray for you, to pray that God will meet that need, that he'll lift that burden. and You can walk in freedom. You can walk lightly instead of carrying a heavy load. Once again, that choice is up to you. These altars are open. If you need anything from the Lord, we're here to pray with you in agreement. You've got to meet your need in Jesus' name. take this time, if you will, to pray about what it is that God would have you to do. And go home and write it down. Why? Because you're going to hear God today and you're going to get started and then in two days you're going to be so hungry that the enemy's going to come along and convince you, you didn't really hear from God. You didn't really hear from God. No, you need to write that down so that you can remember you did hear from God and it was clear and you do know what you're supposed to be doing and not to get tripped up. Take this time also to find the why. Lord, what am I laying down? But also, what am I asking you for? What am I crucifying? What answers am I looking for? What breakthrough needs to happen in my life? What junk have I been carrying for too long? What temptation assails me too often? In what way do I need to change to become more like you? Not to earn your love, but because I see that it's holding me back from being who you created me to be and to do what you created me to do. Pray about that and get certain of the why. Get certain of the what God's called you to do, but the why. What is it that you're asking of him? Be bold. Ask him. Do you need to change the way that you spend? Do you need to, 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 to change something in your life? Figure that out. And know what it is that you're running after. You're running after Jesus, but you're going after him with a decided heart of what you know that he's leading you to change in your life. These altars are open. Anything that you need prayer for, I want you to come. He's here. He's with us. And we're drawing closer to him. And he's going to be drawing closer to us during this time. It's all about Jesus.